Let's answer percentage purity questions from old exam questions. Calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid according to this equation. And the graph here shows the relationship of the mass of calcium carbonate formed and the volume of carbon dioxide formed. So the more calcium carbonate that is reacted, the more carbon dioxide is formed. And here we're speaking about pure calcium carbonate. The first question is, from the graph, determine the volume of carbon dioxide which is produced when 0, 0,072 grams of pure calcium carbonate reacts. So all we need to do is to read the graph. So the only difficult thing about this is understanding the scale of the graph. So here we can see that there are 10 divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 divisions standing for 0, 0,02. So each division stands for 0, 0,002. So here we need 0, 0,072 grams. So how do we read 0, 0,072 grams? Here we have 0, 0,06 and here 0, 0,08. Obviously 0, 0,072 is somewhere in between, almost in the middle, but a little bit closer to 0, 0,08 than the middle. So since each division stands for 0, 0,002, here we have 0, 0,062, 0, 0,064, 0, 0,066, 0, 0, 0,07 and this one here is 0,072. So we come up and then we read across and this is very easy to read because here 10 divisions stand for 10 units. So each unit stands simply for one and you can go and count it, it's 18. So our answer is 18 centimeters cubed of carbon dioxide would be produced when that mass of calcium carbonate reacts. A certain antacid tablet, so that's a tablet which you put into water and then you drink to neutralize the acid in your stomach. And its mass is 0, 0,25 grams. It consists mainly of calcium carbonate, but not totally. Some of it consists of other things other than calcium carbonate. Now what we do is we react this tablet with some hydrochloric acid. And when we do that, it forms bubbles, carbon dioxide. We collect that carbon dioxide and there's 25 centimeter cubed of that carbon dioxide produced. Now the important piece of information is that the concentration of this hydrochloric acid is 0, 0,1 molar. We need to use the graph to calculate the percentage purity of the calcium carbonate in one antacid tablet. So we know that the percentage purity of the calcium carbonate is the mass of calcium carbonate that is inside the tablet divided by the mass of the entire tablet. So here if we have one tablet, if we could know how much in grams of that tablet was actually calcium carbonate, and then we divide that by the mass of the whole tablet, then we could find our answer. So we already know the mass of the entire tablet. They told us that, 0, 0,25 grams. But the missing information is the mass of the calcium carbonate that's inside the tablet. Because not all of this 0, 0,25 is calcium carbonate. Some of it is impurities. Now we need to know how much is calcium carbonate, not impurities. How do we find that out? Well, it's only the calcium carbonate component that would react with the hydrochloric acid to form carbon dioxide. The impurity cannot do that. So if we can know, which we do know, how much carbon dioxide was formed and the ratio of the reaction, we can apply the ratio of the reaction to find out, well, how much calcium carbonate must there have been in order to form that amount of carbon dioxide. So how much carbon dioxide is formed? We're told 25 centimeters cubed of carbon dioxide was formed. So when you take one antacid tablet and react it with hydrochloric acid, the calcium carbonate part of that antacid tablet 
react with that hydrochloric acid to form 25 centimeters cubed of carbon dioxide. And we can use this graph to tell us, therefore, how much calcium carbonate there must have been in order to form 25 centimeters cubed of carbon dioxide. We simply look here on the graph, we find 25, halfway between 20 and 30, and we read off, therefore, what mass of calcium carbonate must there have been in order to form that amount of carbon dioxide, and we find it to be 0, 0,1 grams, which tells us that 0, 0,1 grams of this tablet was calcium carbonate. The rest was other stuff. So 0, 0,1 grams of that tablet was calcium carbonate, Remember, we already know, we were told right at the beginning, that 0, 0.25 grams is the mass of the whole tablet. We simply convert that into a percentage, and we see that 40% of this tablet was calcium carbonate, which means that 60% was other stuff, which we could call impurities. Next question. Calculate the volume of hydrochloric acid. Now we have to remember that this hydrochloric acid is in solution. So this volume is not referring to the volume of a gas at STP. So we can't use the fact that a gas at STP occupies 22,4 decimeter cubed because that's irrelevant in this case because the hydrochloric acid is in solution. It's not a gas. But the volume is going to be measured in decimeter cubed. But what we we have to realize is that the hydrochloric acid has a certain concentration that we were given, which was 0, 0,1 moles per decimeter cubed. Go back to the question to read that if you've forgotten. So we have this hydrochloric acid of 0, 0,1 molar. Molar is the same as mole per decimeter cubed. And we want to know how much of this, what volume of hydrochloric acid must be added to this tablet? Now remember, 40% of the tablet, 0, 0,1 grams, is calcium carbonate. So we need to know what volume of this particular concentration of hydrochloric acid will react completely with 0, 0,1 grams of calcium carbonate. So to be able to answer that, we first need to know the reacting ratio. Now what does make this question a little more tricky is the fact that we are asked volume of hydrochloric acid, but we're going to have to use the concentration to help us to actually get the volume. So in our reaction ratio, we actually mustn't have volume, but rather number of moles of hydrochloric acid. And then we'll use the concentration to convert that number of moles that we then calculate into volume. So the first step is to give the molar reacting ratio. And the only things that we're interested in is calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. We can forget about the rest because those are the chemicals that we have information given about or required about. And first we give the mole reacting ratio. We just use the coefficients. One mole of calcium carbonate reacts with every two moles of hydrochloric acid. Now we need to convert that into a mass mole ratio. We need the the mass of calcium carbonate that reacts with every certain number of moles of hydrochloric acid. How do we know that that's what we need? I've already explained about the reason why we need moles of hydrochloric acid, even though we actually that asked gap. for decimeter cubed. But we are going to have to make use of the concentration to help us. And the given information we have is the mass of calcium carbonate. That's why we need grams calcium carbonate in our ratio. So we ask ourselves, one mole of calcium carbonate, how many grams is that? In other words, we need to know the molar mass of calcium carbonate. 40 grams per mole for calcium, 12 for carbon, 3 times 16 for oxygen, 100 grams per mole. So one mole of calcium carbonate has a mass of 100 grams. And two moles of hydrogen chloride is obviously two moles. So here we've converted the mole ratio into a mass mole ratio. We are going to make use of that to answer our question. Our question is, how many decimeter cubed, what volume of hydrochloric acid, remembering that the concentration is 0, 0,1 mole per decimeter cubed, that's very important, will be neutralized by one antacid tablet, which we've already seen has a mass of 0, 0,1 grams, or rather has 0, 0,1 grams of pure calcium carbonate inside it. So we're asking, how many decimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid do you need to react 
with 0,1 grams of calcium carbonate. But obviously the answer depends on how concentrated that hydrochloric acid is. So we have to bring the concentration in somehow. So we're going to answer this in two steps. First of all, we're going to find out how many moles of hydrochloric acid would be needed to react with 0,1 grams calcium carbonate. So we're going to use this reacting ratio as our conversion factor there. And we know that two moles of hydrochloric acid is needed for every 100 grams of calcium carbonate to react. Now that's all very well, gets rid of grams of calcium carbonate, and it tells us how many moles of hydrochloric acid are needed to neutralize the 0,1 grams of calcium carbonate. But it's not what we were asked. We were asked how many decimeter cubed of this particular concentration. So we need to get rid of moles hydrochloric acid, and we need to introduce decimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid. And this is where our concentration of hydrochloric hydrochloric acid comes in because we know that in this particular hydrochloric acid there are 0,1 moles in every decimeter cubed. We do the calculation and we find that we need 0,02 decimeter cubed of this particular hydrochloric acid. Notice that if the concentration had been different been something else, then we would need a different volume of hydrochloric acid. If it had been more concentrated, we would have needed less hydrochloric acid solution. If it had been a weaker concentration of hydrochloric acid, we would have needed a greater volume. This part here of the calculation would yield to us how many moles of hydrochloric acid we need. And that is independent of the concentration. That would always be the case. If you've got 0,1 grams of calcium carbonate, you would need to have 0,1 times 2 divided by 100, which is 0,002 moles of hydrochloric acid. In other words, 0,002 moles of hydrochloric acid will always neutralize 0,1 grams of calcium carbonate. So the last part of our calculation simply converted the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, which would always be needed to neutralize 0,1 grams calcium carbonate, into the volume for this particular situation with this particular concentration.